Good morning, good morning, everybody. Actually, it's like still nighttime, but out here in the shop grinding, late night grinding, trying to get this beast, um, the vest beast done. I'm going to give you guys a quick look. Right now, I'm just doing the finishing braiding up for a client. Uh, but what I really wanted to talk to you guys about, uh, really several things. Um, as you know, I'm your man, the Leather Cowboy, right here, Premier Leather Crafters. Let me get this camera adjusted right now. You guys can tell it's been an all-nighter, man. I'm looking rough. You know, I haven't even um, just got myself together because this has been a stressful project. Not really stressful at all, but um, if you guys have, uh, are familiar with uh, double X braiding, you know the work that's involved in leather braiding. So, and this is a very, very large piece to be braiding. Um, it's actually like, um, cause you, the hardest, the most difficult part about leather braiding is that you're just taking, you're taking one single strand and you're braiding the, um, the outside edges of the work. Now, leather braiding can, and it will enhance your work. It'll enhance your work so much. Uh, I mean, it just brings it out very, I mean, really make your work look beautiful. And so you guys give me just a second while I'm doing this and I'll put this on the mannequin and let you see uh, the progress that we made. I know I've been doing several videos or several pictures I've been posting on the website and on my social media um, accounts about uh, this this particular vest and so but let me tell you a story I took it down to Tandy yesterday uh, if you guys don't know you have a Tandy in your area Tandy has a massive sale and it'll actually end tomorrow but I went down yesterday and really got some good picks I mean they had they have hides that are on sale um, let me show you just what I picked up. Great big hide that was on sale yesterday. Now this is eight to nine ounce. I got some three to five ounce as well. Um, that they had the eight to nines that was marked down to 59, not 69. Yeah, 59.99. And then they had some three and four ounce that was marked down to uh, 39.99. And, and uh, as you know, this time of year, Tandy has uh, a lot of their tools that are on sale this year. I think it was marked off 30%. Uh, I also wound up picking up some uh, leather lace that they had marked down to $6.99 for a 50-yard spool. So this, you can really come up right now at Tandy with your supplies uh, if you can make it down there. And also, I saw that they uh, have added the Cobra 4s. So if you guys are looking for a great sewing machine, the Cobra 4s, and if you if you are any crafter new uh, to the business or a veteran to the business, just ask around about that Cobra 4 uh, sewing machine. Now, also what I saw when I was there is that Tandy is also offering a Stitch Master sewing machine that's just as good. Uh, no, let me take that back. It's not just as good as the Cobra 4, but it is a beast. And I think it is a great investment. Now, the Cobra 4s that they had down there was running like $24.99, but the Stitch Master was like $14.97, and it doesn't take up a whole bunch of space. So, uh, you can grit. If, if you're into wanting that nice professional sewing finish, um, especially me as an old school crafter where I do a lot of hand stitching, but now that business is taking up a lot, I really don't have the time to do a whole lot of hand stitching anymore. So I'm very much considering getting that uh, Stitch Master because especially if you're doing like holsters, holsters, wallets, and things like that, you know, that stitching is, is something serious in there. And then you can, uh, once you get used to doing that, you can also do a lot of decorative stitching as well. So, but uh, just to let you guys know, and you guys know that I'm a Tandy guy. Uh, you've been following me long enough to know 
that um, Tandy. Now I shop at other um, supply stores too, um, just as much. But you know, Tandy is right here locally, and it's only about sixty-eight miles, maybe seventy-two miles away. So I can always drive down there and put my hands on the hides. Now, but uh, and I took the beast. This project, I took the beast down there because I like to get the um, different input and insight. Not that I question my own craftsmanship, but you know, sometimes uh, I don't. I'm not one of those crafters that's just um, I know everything. So sometimes it's good to just have some other crafters, especially crafters that have been doing this a lot longer than I have. Uh, give them. And input a lot of them to give you some input and insights on even just because uh, what I ask I ask well what can you tell me to make the project better now the great part was it was like cowboy you know um, man you did a phenomenal job with that and that's always good to hear because uh, what that tells me is the things that they see the client will see or to give them a different view. But it was great reviews that came back um, down there and it, cause it was just packed. I knew, I knew it was gonna be packed with the massive sale that they had. So it, it gave me a lot of time to, uh, it gave me time for other people to lay their eyes on the piece and uh, give me some good input. Now, several things that I wanna do, and I, I'll do a video on this later on, uh, because what I learned was when you're doing large projects like this, try not to use alcohol dye, the fibings or the feebings, whichever, whichever way you hold your mouth is the proper way to say it, depending on what part of the world you're from. Uh, but if you're using fibings or feebings on large projects, you probably want to stay away from that. And that's the golden nugget tip of the day. Stay away from using alcohol-based dyes on large projects. And i tell you why. The alcohol and the fibings will cause your leather to become very stiff. It doesn't matter what you've done to soften this project up. The alcohol will evaporate the moisture and the oil in the leather. And that was one major concern with this project because it is a leather vest, but the fibings is, uh, I mean, and, and I actually soaked this thing into a, um, um, a little tote of the Neat's Foot oil. It soaked for 24 hours because I knew it was a large project and I wanted to soften it up as quickly as I possibly could. But once the alcohol dye got onto the project, it really stiffened it right back up. And you guys, uh, again, I'm going to show you what I'm talking about on this. But that was one little golden nugget of information that I picked up yesterday from... Uh, one of the master craftsmen from our state here in Alabama. So, um, this is when he encouraged me. He said, hey, look, if I was you on large projects like that, you know, um, I would go with the EcoFlow or EcoFlow water base. Now, the reason why I like fibing so much, even though it is an alcohol-based dye, I like fibings because when you buff that, fi that uh, fibings, it buffs to a nice little luster gloss. It gives a nice little gloss. And that's why I don't like using the uh, EcoFlow because it doesn't buff to that gloss like I like. But in considering, in considering the project that you're working on, you might want to, you might want to take that in consideration. So if you're working on large purses uh, or bags or things like that um you, you want to take that in consideration about the uh fibings uh die so um let me see what else did we talk about we talked of also um 
uh, man, because we talked about so much yesterday. Actually, every time I go to Tandy, I always spend more time than what I have. But the knowledge and information that you get is, I mean, it's priceless for real. It's really priceless. So let me, because I'm running, I'm running out of my lace right here. So it's about time for me to show you guys this, and we're at the 10 minute mark. So I'm going to pause the video and finish up this little lace of thread. You guys can see me finish this little up, and then I'll pop back on and, and finish, show you the finished touches. Okay, and we're back. Now I'm going to show you guys. Let me put the light on this so we can get the light. So I want you to see all of the features in this thing. Now, this is a motorcycle vest that a client came in, a new client actually, and he wanted something specifically and different. He wanted something different. So just to give you guys a quick insight of what we're working with, here we go right here. This is the beast. I call it the beast. Uh, we have the 3D graphics. Um, that was the other, um, another golden nugget of information that I'm going to drop real quick about the 3D um, tooling and, and, and carving. And that was very critical and key. Now, traditionally, as an old school crafter, you'll take the leather dust or you'll take sawdust, which I use sawdust because that's the way that I learned how to do it. And what you do is once you do your 3D graphics, you'll uh, pack the inside behind the leather with sawdust into your your part the parts that you've tooled to push out to be that 3d effect i don't know if you can see it but you can see it's a little raised a little bit and i did that on both both of the leather patches so if you ever see this vest out you'll know um what's happening here with the 3d effect and this is sawdust that um because I, I, I have a, uh, a sanding belt, so when I do, uh, I just took a little block of wood and just put it on that sanding uh, belt and just got me a lot of bunch of dust, swept it up, ran it through a sifter, and then I packed that. You mix that with um, a rubber cement, and you come up with a nice paste. So once it hardens, it'll keep all of your 3D work pushed out. Now, one key thing that I would tell you to do if you're getting up into 3D carving or 3D stamping, use a uh, four to five ounce leather. It, it's just, it's not as thick. Uh, and when you start to do your spooning work and pushing that, that uh, the fibers of the leather out, it just works great. So uh, experiment around with that 3D carving. Basically all of what you would do, you would still carve all of your graphics on the uh, grain side and then you'll flip that over to your flesh side and you'll take your modeling spoon and you just start pushing that out um, you and you can see your carving lines from the inside part so when you just you just take that modeling spoon and push it out and of course you would have to wet it just like you would do uh, if you were tooling on the on the, uh, the grain the grain side now uh, now, this is what I want you guys to see about the leather braiding. Leather braiding can make that work look very, very good. It just, it just gives it a different look. And it gives it that nice professional feel. And now, you can tell why I started here. And I went all the way down. The Let me see if I can pull this up. Because this is braided all the way around. So I found me a starter point, started braiding down, and it went all the way around the back side, coming up this side, and now we, we stopped right behind this belt strap. But I'm going to finish taking this lace all the way up around the neck and then connect it uh, right on the opposite side, and then this little puppy is done. Now, one of the key features on this vest, and I guess you can see the bulge right there, that is a hideaway holster. Now, the great part, now, if you're going to get off into making these, um, that's one thing, especially in that motorcycle world, you don't want, uh, I didn't want it to be visible that the holster was inside the vest. Uh, you can also put an interior cell phone in there. Now, of course, you know, there's no pockets because this is a show piece. Now, being, again, being as large as it is, um, the next time that I make one of these or probably do one of these just for an advertisement or display, I'm going to try the EcoFlow brand 
just to see how how it works uh, so it won't be so stiff. But this thing here, boys and girls, right now as it sits, this is no fold or bend. That's just me holding one side and it's not collapsing at all. This thing is super stiff. Now, in the beginning of the makeup, I wanted it to be stiff because if the rider ever was to lay the bike down, God forbid, but this would be protect, protected because it's so thick of um, a high. But I really wanted the, the rider not to get any road rash or anything like that. Everything else can be replaced or it's just cosmetic. But this, here it is, ladies and gentlemen, the beast right here, Premier Leather Crafters. And see, you see just how that fibers just gives it that gloss. Now, granted, this has been super sheen, so it, it just brings out that natural, it brings out that luster of the fibers. But that's going to be a hard decision for me to really see how the EcoFlow um, has it get how it gives that gloss. Now, what I probably won't do is I won't use the super sheen on the, with the EcoFlow. I'll, I'll most likely I'll go with the tan coat or a neat lac because that neat lac and tan coat really makes it gloss and pop. This is just fibings and and super sheen. Hey, I'm the Leather Cowboy right here at Premier Leather Crafters. Thank you guys for chilling with me and checking out my new piece, The Beast. Stay tuned for more videos because the next video I'm going to get off into is flash dyeing. And um, that's for, for those out there who are making holsters, knife sheaths, and things like that, uh, where you might be using the chrome tan oil that's always soaked, soaked, soaked all the way through, which is another key real quick. If you're going to get off into these, c consider chrome tan leather as opposed to veg tan. Because the chrome tan, I know you guys saw that, veg tan, now this is going to have to require me to uh if you wanted to you can spray this interior part black but that's of course using more black dye so if you're going to get off into doing these i would encourage you to consider chrome tan it's already dyed all the way through In most cases you don't have to do anything except just put your little light super sheen on there to give it that store-bought look hey this is the leather cowboy right here premier leather crafters in the dirty dirty i gotta get back to work because the client is coming to pick this up you know fortunately uh, by the grace of god we got good weather so i know he wants to get out there on the bike and ride with this thing i'll see you guys on the other side keep crafting